What if Bruno's gift was loved by the town and by his family and he never left? I feel like he would be only telling perfect visions his whole life because of Abuela until Mirabel convinces him that not everything in the future can be a good thing. Bad things may come, therefore helping him. Nobody needs to know. The Reynolds pamphlet. My back on the wall, back, who am I call my family? The next day, dead. No, no. He told me I'd grow a gut, and just like he said, he said no. that all my hair would disappear. Now look at my head. No, no. Your friend is still with your prophecy is red. Well. The syrup is the syrup in a sippy cup. He's still dead. Bruno says it looks like rain. Why should he tell us? In doing so, he floods my brain. I will like the umbrella. Carrying a hurricane. What a joy you stay, but anyway, we, we don't, don't talk about Bruno. No, no, no. We, we don't, don't talk about Bruno. Hey, you don't live in fear when I start a ring of stumbling. I can always hear him sort of muttering and mumbling. I associate him with the sound. Brother Bruno lost his way in his family. I don't want the same for you. Did you know the Louisa toy can hold everything? Antonio gets his gift today My older sisters Isabel and Luisa One strong, one graceful Perfect in every I want everyone to know that the second I saw this animated man right here I said, oh, he is getting one slurred Hard Just look at him He is a scraggly man With a not threatening demeanor And a tough relationship with his family This is the boyfriend of every bisexual woman Who swore she'd date a girl next time
He is going to get you to start playing D&D, you have been warned. Much like someone cursed with precognition, I will watch the fan art unfold before my eyes before it has even been created. I have seen this before and it will happen again. Unless it has already happened, I will grant I have not been on Tumblr in a few years. Welcome to the family, Madrigal. The home of the family, Madrigal. I know it sounds a bit fantastical and magical, but I'm part of the family, Madrigal. And embrace! And embrace! To make the candle bright, you have to embrace her! Embrace who? Oh, almost there. Who is it? Almost there. Oh, oh, I got it! Isabella! And they were roommates. Oh my god, they were roommates. So you just gonna birthday. bring me a birthday gift on my birthday to my birthday party on my birthday with a birthday gift? Happy birthday? Hey, 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 hey. Why are you running? Why are you running? I can happily talk about this, but listen, if I cry, I might have to stop. The reason I think about this so much is because I think it's a really big trigger for Mirabel and the reason why she has the song Waiting for a Miracle. She practically breaks down after hearing Abuela tell Antonio a gift just as special as you. She's been constantly telling herself that she's fine, she's fine, she's fine, but finally in that song she breaks down and says, I'm not fine! <laughs> and she felt that in the ceremony, look into her eyes. She knows that it happened, and she's been telling herself that it's okay. She has a supportive family who, like, loves her and tells her that it's okay, but... She knows how Abella felt, and a lot of that is held through throughout the movie. You can see in her facial expressions how much that Abella's words mean to her and how much it hurts her. She can tell in those subtleties. So finally, at the end of the movie, when she pr breaks down, it's heart-wrenching. But afterwards, I truly believe that Abuela let that feeling of fear turn into a feeling of resentment. And that shit hurts! Mirabel didn't get one. <laughs> oh, and Luisa. I heard her eye twitching all night. Did you know Encanto has not one, but two book adaptations? Let's look at some of the insights one of them, Encanto, A Tale of Three Sisters, offers us. The first and most obvious difference is that the book is narrated by all three sisters, Isabella, Luisa, and Mirabel. This allows us to fill in various scenes outside of Mira's point of view. One of my favorite moments was during Antonio's gift ceremony, where he says, I need you. Luisa, our current narrator, thinks that he's talking about her, and even moves to stand up before her mother stops her. It's also mentioned several times that Isabella is jealous of Mirabel because she doesn't have a gift. Isa wonders what it would be like not to have that burden placed upon her, which explains some of her snide behavior towards her sister. There's also some interesting conflicts in narration that you can catch if you pay attention. Mirabel claims that she kept smiling after her ceremony, while Isabella recounts that Dolores heard her crying all night. One of my favorite things that the book did was give Augustine and Felix some more depth and make them besties. They are described as always deep in conversation, twice in the book, both in the marketplace at the beginning and during Mariano's proposal dinner. Felix in particular is described as a guy who never worries about anything and is always cracking people up. And they're both musicians. Augustine plays the piano while Felix plays the tiple, which, in case you're wondering, is a type of 12-stringed Latin guitar, which it's also mentioned that Dolores plays. I like to think he taught her. And of course, we gotta talk about Bruno. He is way more blunt in the book than in the movie. Instead of saying something about how he doesn't really have an excuse for Mirabel to leave, he just says, I'm getting very uncomfortable, so I think you should go. He's also noticeably more nervous around Antonio's animals, at one point asking if the jaguar is going to eat him, to which Antonio replies, not today. It's also heavily implied that his visions physically hurt him, with him wincing in pain during the vision ceremony in Antonio's room. And finally, Mirabel describes him as someone with a lot of practice with giving up. There's also a joke about how the rats say he doesn't wash his underwear, but uh, I choose to believe for my own sanity that that was a joke. <laughs> 
There's a lot more cool details that I can point out, so let me know if anyone's interested in a part two. Bye! You got it. Welcome back, and let's look at some more details from the Encanto novelization that we didn't see in the movie. And specific quest to focus on Luisa, Peppa, and Isabella, but let me know if there's anything else y'all want to hear about. Starting off strong, there are a ton of cute details about Luisa that we didn't see in the movie. She's not always aware of her own strength, oblivious, and nearly suffocating Mira when she wrapped her up in a hug, although it is mentioned that everyone in the family loves Luisa's hugs. It's also mentioned her ears turn red when she's either embarrassed or lying. She really tries to be neutral ground between her sisters and cares and worries about them both deeply, especially Isabella. During the family breakfast, she notices that her sister looks almost sick and wonders if anyone's consulted Isabella about the proposal. She's also very aware of the rivalry between Mirabel and Isabella, commenting that she wouldn't want to get on the wrong side of either of them. It's also very clearly established from her internal narration that she has a one-track mind, only able to focus on one thing at a time, and getting confused when Mirabel keeps pestering about what's wrong, making her mix up some of her chores, like saying she has to dig a patio and pave a river. <laughs> Shunning some light on Peppa, the book has a lot more cute moments in time that showcase what a sweet and attentive mother she is. She worries about Antonio a lot, often causing her to get into thunderous moods. And she's also very supportive of Dolores and Camilo. At the end of the book, there's a scene I wish we had gotten in the movie where Dolores says that maybe sometimes she can talk, not just listen. And Camilo says he wants to try being himself, nearly making her cry and saying that she would like that a lot. Honestly, between this and the epilogue, which I may talk about later, I almost prefer the book ending. There's also a lot more information on the relationship between Peppa and Bruno, with her admitting she missed her brother dearly and wanted to cry when he left, which she probably didn't because she's been told multiple times throughout the book to just follow her emotions up and stop feeling things with... Hmm, interesting. Also, she and Felix are so cute and have a lot of fun moments, uh, and they embarrass Camilo with PDA. It, it, it's so funny. Ending things out with our Bella of the Ball, Mariano constantly sends Isabella presents. At the beginning, when Mirabel gets her special, unspecial gift, Isa thinks it's for her since Mariano is constantly sending her chocolates and flowers, which, you know, just shows he doesn't get her at all. It's also mentioned by Luisa that Isa spreads daisies when she's nervous, putting that breakfast scene in a whole different context. She focuses highly on what others want instead of herself, making her think that Bruno's prophecy says she will marry Mariano since Abuela is so proud of her for it, and she wants nothing more than Abuela's approval. Her need to be liked by everyone and everyone's favorite is unhealthily obsessive, with her jealous of Mirabel even after she wrecks her proposal dinner, because Augustine stands up for Mirabel, making Isabel think she has to try harder to be perfect because she's still convinced Mirabel is her father's favorite. Uh, I'm going to be reading the second book this weekend, just let me know if there's anything you want me to keep an eye out for, and I'll be back with more information in part three. Bye!